Mm. Oh, haha. <laughs> Good day out there YouTube friends, family, newcomers. I hope that you found this video because you were looking for some wood refinishing or maybe you were just wanting to see what kind of chips and salsa that I'm gonna get a hold of this time. Yes, those of you who don't know yet, chips and salsa is probably my favorite snack and if you ever wanna get really big points with me for doing some kind of get together, um, have really good chips and salsa. So, getting right into it, we're going to restore this beautiful Yamaha 6 foot 4 inch grand piano. I'm going to take you through the whole process of when I did this wood finish. It's a Campbell um, two part system for the most part. The sealer that goes over the bare wood is a two part. It has the main component and then the hardener, as well as the top coat clear that's meant for the finish and the shininess that you see. It's a base component and same thing, you're mixing it about five to one. It's got a hardener that goes in it, so it creates that chemical reaction and uh, you get a nice, hard, almost like plastic coating finish, just like the clear coat you would put on your car. All right, so this is a 1951 Yamaha Semi Concert Grand Piano. I've already restored one of the legs. I'm gonna be restoring this thing little by little. So you can kind of see the potential. It's a darker stain with a good polyurethane on top. You know, the brass is polished up, things like that. So I'm gonna start with the legs. All the keys are still in pretty good shape. It plays pretty nice. Um, this one is known as a number 35. That's the, uh, the model of it. So I don't really know how many of them were made, but according to the the history that I've pulled up on it, it was made in 1951, so I don't really know much about it, but I've enjoyed playing it and keeping it tuned. It's been a, been a nice instrument so far, so we'll get restoration started. I've got the left leg off, and uh, I'm going to move over to the garage. So I started this project by testing the colors, like I was saying. I did one of the legs and then I did one of the blocks that go next to the keyboard and I tried putting it in some different lights so as you can see here I had one of the legs done and I wanted to see what it was gonna look like kind of in the dark with some really good fluorescent lighting on it and just kinda get an idea for how much I really liked the stain color and I ended up going with a a really nice kind of a red mahogany if you were getting something at a local store. I can't remember exactly what the name is on the can that I got from Campbell, but the wood finishing system that I'm using offers the stain that goes with their clear coat. So that's what we used here. I would say all in all, the piano was just in such good shape. I just didn't have a lot of repairs to do besides the legs, which I took apart and took some time to re-glue and make sure that those were nice and sturdy because of the fact that this piano is so heavy. All right, so here's the left leg. I've already taken the wheel off. The fall board over there. Um, so, this thing has some issues. I don't know if this piano had been around some water or what. Um, these wood pieces on this leg are kind of coming apart. So what I need to do is 
I need to get some good glue up in here. You can even see it's kind of separating just because all of this is kind of held on by this spindle. There's like a, these weird wooden spindle things inside here. Now I managed to remove one of the slats and you can kind of see it's, uh, I numbered them so I know what order they go in. I just moved this piece. So, um, this one came out of here. So it seems like if you move, if you remove those first, there might be a way to pull this whole, this whole like peg out that holds the leg together. I don't know exactly what the trick is to taking this out. I've tried and I've messed with it. I've even uh, tried putting a, like a screwing a, a bolt or a screw in here. And then I had a slide hammer that I was pulling back on to try and draw it out that way. But um, I don't want to force anything too much. So that's kind of where this leg is. I'm gonna do the restoration on it next. But basically I'm gonna glue and clamp all of these pieces together really nice and tight. Even if I can't get this peg out, I'm gonna make sure that the glue is holding the leg to the, the, the platform pretty nice and strong. I'm gonna make sure I get lots of glue in there, you know, at least sand it a little bit. My goal is to get this peg out. I'd like to be able to take it apart and see how this thing is actually put together, but I just don't know the trick for removing this. So maybe by the end of this restoration, I'll figure it out. All right, so I was able to get the outer layer of this leg off. And what that did was it gave, it gave this part enough access to where I could lightly tap it that way and allow it to slide up this metal peg that holds the leg together. And what I had to do is get some wood glue down in between this crack because I wanted the glue to be solid, you know, the platform of the round part to the platform of the, the flat part. So I put a lot of glue in there and I've got it kind of clamped together. So that one's drying right down in there. So basically what I'm going to do next is I'm going to glue this one and then I'm going to clamp those two together. And I can do that the way that it is. I can get glue down in there and you know I can stick something in there to make sure it's spread around good. I wish I was able to get in there really good and sand it. If I could have separated these pieces that's going to be the best way. And I still might figure it out. but. You need to at least sand in there because there was some glue and it didn't it didn't penetrate very well. I was looking at this one and the glue it just it, there wasn't very much that it penetrated. It's almost as if they put the glue on this part wet and then they didn't actually apply it wet here too because you know, they always say you wet both sides so that it soaks in and then you put them together but it just kind of seemed like maybe they glued one side of it and then it was already like, maybe the glue might have glazed over a little bit so it didn't soak into this piece as good, I'm not really sure. But that's my assumption. And uh, so I'll get all these pieces nice and tightly glued back together so this leg will be really solid. And uh, I couldn't get that center peg out. I don't really know what's holding it in. I know I was able to get that one like shim out, but um, it's not really necessary now that I can get glue in there. So that's basically the steps. I'm gonna get the leg nice and structurally solid and then I'll start uh, sanding it and doing the stain and lacquer process or whatever you wanna call it, poly. So that's the left leg. All right. When I got the legs taken off, I wanted to remove the caster wheels and I could tell that this piano had been through some you know just over the years of moving it around like maybe going over kind of a bumpy wood floor or the tile or even the carpet if you roll the wheels a little bit here and there you can imagine after 60 or 70 years of the piano's life the wheels had gotten a little bit bent just from the weight I mean take into consideration a, uh, a six foot four inch grand piano, especially a Yamaha. I mean, it's built with really thick wood. This thing is, is heavy. It's one of the heaviest pianos that I've moved in this size. And I've moved quite a few. So the wheels, it's only natural that they would get a little bit of a, a bend to them. All right, so somehow the case of this wheel seems like it's in okay shape, but over time this thing must have 
I don't know, they must have dropped it on the wheel at one point, which kind of scares me about what the piano's been through. But somehow that thing got bent, that spindle in there. So I'm gonna put it in my hydraulic press and see if I can push on it and bend it back. Now I normally wouldn't do something like this, but it's just kind of a last resort. I don't know how it's to build to bend that huge spindle. So it works just kind of like a jack. It's got a pole that goes in it, and then when you jack it up, it pushes against the top. We're gonna see if we can bend this back real quick. So here we go, pushing pressure on it now. Okay, I don't know how this is gonna go. Is it bending? It's bending it back a little bit. I gotta be careful. This is a lot of pressure, it feels like. But I know this metal spindle is like super, it's thick, so it's gonna take a lot of pressure to bend it back. Oh, I think it's working. Look at the gap changing. Definitely working, but I need to reposition my orange piece. Hold on, let me stop for a sec. So it's probably about as straight as I'm gonna get this thing for me just playing around in the garage. But uh, it's definitely better than it was, so it's cool. And I found that when I took the wheels off, I was able to get them in my hydraulic press and kind of straighten them out a little bit. And I also straightened them a little too far so that there would be some of that, you know, a little bit of spring action on it. When the weight of the piano's on it, if it straightens the, the wheel out, it can pivot just right. Rather than putting it perfectly level and then starting it off already a little bit bent, I figured I would I would undo the bend a little bit and then go a little further. Hopefully that's gonna keep me from ever having to do that again to these wheels. So I wasn't exactly sure what to expect with the Campbell finishing system. I had heard good things about it and I figured if it was anything like automotive clear coat I'd be able to use it without a problem. But I was instantly impressed by the finish that I achieved on one of the legs and one of the little side blocks. Also something about using professional wood finish systems, you're going to notice that the stain color seems to lay out a lot better. You know, it soaks into the wood and it seems to really even itself out really nice versus kind of a cheaper brand that I would just get at a box store. Sometimes it's easy to get blotches and things like that with the color. If you don't put it on really evenly, it might soak in kind of uneven. But what I noticed with the Campbell finish is that everything seemed to be really even and I immediately love the color and the clear finish that I got out of it. All right, so this is interesting. My first time with a real uh, professional wood finishing system. Lots of additives and things, kind of like automotive. This is what I'm used to. You've got the, the clear coat, you've got the hardener, and then some reducer. And that's what I'm used to. Typically, the good products, you have to mix stuff together. And it's almost like a exactly what I wanted, kind of a resin-based uh, clear for the piano, because, you know, pianos have really hard, thick, clear coats on them. It's not like automotive, which you can use car paint type clear coat on wood once you've sealed it good, but um, it's not made for it. This is something that's actually meant to go over wood, so I'm really excited about this. So we'll try it out. So there are some areas where I had to use wood filler, so we're touching those with a little bit of stain before we do the whole thing to try and catch those areas up, you know, get them a little bit closer to the original color. That way the, uh, the stain doesn't coat unevenly when I put on the next one. I want it to, you know, kind of be caught up. It's kind of what I said, but <clears throat> yeah, that's what I'm doing. Touching up the wood filler spots. So what's on here now is like an inner coat sealer in a way. It looks like a clear coat and it is pretty shiny, but it's made for kind of sealing off the wood. So, you know, weird oils and things like that. It's, it's meant to be compatible and it creates that sandable barrier 
between the actual clear coat and the wood. So when this stuff dries, it's going to have a little bit uh, more of like a satin kind of finish. It's not going to be so glossy, but it allows you that surface that you can lightly sand. So when you put the clear coat on, you get like a super smooth, like you can see on the, the little edges there, you know, like little bits of dust might have built up or just, it's just inconsistencies in the wood. So all that will kind of sand out and then the final coats of clear will give it that really super high glossy look that we like. You know, kind of like when you cover a bar top with resin. So it'll have a, a really good shiny finish to it. But the stuff is really cool. Uh, it definitely sprays out like automotive clear coat. It's got a lot of the same smell. Um, so it's just formulated more for wood and you know it's not like going to Lowe's or Walmart and getting a can of clear coat like a spray can um, it's a lot more expensive there's parts you got to blend together and you put it in a spray gun and actually spray it out that way so uh, I think it's gonna come out good I'm excited So one thing I really liked about this system is it goes on in a few different stages. The Isolante is the sealer that's meant to go over the bare wood. And what's kind of cool about it is when it dries, it gives you a clear finish, but it gives you this satin sheen that's not super glossy. And I'll tell you, if I wasn't going for a super glossy piano, this satin finish is beautiful. And you could just about put on this sealer and leave it alone. Just never touch it. I mean, it would be done. It's like a finished product. But since I was going for the super glossy look, I did a nice scuffing on top of the sealer. It also helped me sand out some of the imperfections because you can see some of that disappearing as you go. Then, when you're ready for your final coat, it's going to come out a lot nicer. And you can decide, do I want to do a nice sanding again and do a third round or not? So it's going to be the Isolante sealer, then you're going to have the Polarion clear that goes over it. And that's kind of the one that you could build if you want to. For me, I just did one round of each. And typically when I do a round of the sealer, I'm putting on, you know, two fairly thick coats. You're going to spray one on, you're going to give it just a little bit of time to tack up, and then spray on a second coat. And once that's completely cured and dry, you can sand out little imperfections and get ready to put on that final clear. Same thing with the final clear coat. I'm pretty much doing two coats at a time because I don't want to just pile on a bunch of material, especially if we're having any kind of chemical reactions and things, which this paint system was actually very good with the reactions. I didn't notice any bad fish eyeing or anything like that. I had one place that it started to, but I know it was my fault because I think I put on a little bit too much in the beginning, but that's okay. It was a new product for me and I had to get the feel for it so I figured I was gonna have some bit of an issue but it didn't take me long to kind of you know fix that and even it out it's no big deal so once I had my color all figured out I decided to dig right into it as I did a couple parts and I knew that I was going to like the color, um, I got the whole piano disassembled. What I try to do is take everything apart that can be taken apart without damaging things or without having to do any extensive woodwork. You know, anything that can come apart with, you know, a screwdriver or a, a wrench, all that kind of stuff is what I'll take apart. I like all the brass pieces to come off because I want to polish those up really nice and uh, and get those looking shiny and brand new again such as the pedals, the hinges, and uh, any other little pieces like the locking accessories and things like that. Now some of the things that are going to make this process a lot easier for you is taking out things like the keyboard action. Of course all the big wooden parts got to come off. As I may have mentioned before the lid, the music desk, anything that comes off really easily, you want to put that stuff aside and kind of prep it all separately. The keyboard action is definitely something that needs to come out because you don't want all your sanding dust falling down into the parts. 
I mean, one of the best things you could do if you're going to restore a grand piano is pull that action out and set it maybe somewhere in your house in a safe spot. If you got a dining room table that you don't use very often, just put down a nice towel, set the action on there, and just tell people to stay away from it because it is pretty delicate. You don't want anybody falling and putting their hands on it in the middle of the night or anything like that. So put the action in a safe place and if you have any work to do to it, a lot of times I kind of save that for last because I'll get that done before I'm ready to put it back in and uh, make any adjustments and things like that as you're getting ready to finish it off. Now most of the parts I'm able to disassemble to a point where I don't really have to do a lot of taping and masking. Of course the case of the piano is a different story, especially if you're not going to take all the strings and the harp and everything out. This piano didn't need to go down that far. So I'm doing a lot of taping and masking. I want to cover everything up that's not getting painted because that overspray is so thick. Especially with a good two part clear coat like your automotive stuff and things you'd paint your car with. It's so thick. I mean the overspray gets everywhere. If you've got exposed glass or anything like that, be ready to have to clean it off if you're not covering it up. So make sure you take some good time to tape really, really precise, you know, everywhere that you don't want the paint to get. And once it's all nice and taped up, you can be confident that you're going to get a good finish and you can do what you got to do. You can get that clear coat on nice and thick and you don't have to worry about all the materials getting caught up in the little crevices that you don't want them to go to. So, I mean, it's not perfect, like, this is nice and shiny, you know, of course there's little dust particles, but I'll be able to buff those out. I might buff it a little bit, like, like I can lightly sand the little dust pieces out of the top of it, and then just polish it back out. But really, like, overall, I mean, it looks so much better than it did, and now it's protected. I love this top board. That's my favorite. That part, or maybe this area, I love that, so cool. Anyway, that's it, woohoo, the big part's done, so glad. Alright, so here it is, the case of my 1951 Yamaha semi-concert grand piano is pretty much done as far as the finish work goes. Man, this clear is amazing, look, you can see myself in it. Whoa. So um, here, I like wanted to take, I wanted to do this, there I am. That stuff is shiny. Of course, uh, it, took, it took some work, and this thing is not perfect by any means. I mean, for being as old as it is, I wanted to sand some stuff down. I fixed a few things. It has divots. It has little imperfections in it. But for the work that I put into it, I mean, it was a good solid three days or so of just taping and sanding and uh, trying not to breathe that stuff in. So, I mean, I'm happy with the way that it came out for for the time I put into it. So, you know, it's it's definitely not perfect. Now that's where the hinge goes, so that looks kind of nasty. But um, I don't know, I like these little side rails. They're nice and shiny. Let's see, there's 
And let's see the top. I'm trying to get like the glare. I like this little top bar too. <clears throat> so yeah, that's it. Uh, I'm gonna pull the tape and paper off and we'll see how it looks. I mean, I know how it looks, but put the keyboard back in it. I'm pretty happy with it. So I can just add piano finishing to another one of my services. <laughs> So yeah, anyway, let me know what you guys think. I'm pretty happy with it. I mean, it's not going to be perfect, and uh, I don't know. I like it. <laughs> Later. So you can see we're moving right along through the process. Things are coming out really nice. It's uh, basically a lot of sanding, taping, and uh, making sure the surface is nice and clean. I took some time to fix some of the cracks in the wood laminate, and I've got a few different ways that I'll do that. Sometimes it's just a matter of dabbing in a little bit of super glue and then sanding it down. Or uh, even a little bit of epoxy resin. It really just depends on where it's at and things like that. I didn't have really any wood repairs to do on this piano. There were very few places that I needed to maybe get a little bit of wood glue in there and clamp it back together for a short period of time. Now as things are coming together, I'm spending some time, as you can see, buffing and polishing the brass, trying to get those pieces as shiny as I can get them. Also it's a good idea to get a good brass lacquer if you can. I want to say it you know, comes in the spray cans and whatnot. Um, that's going to help keep the brass from tarnishing right away as soon as somebody touches it. There are some good metal polishes and even waxes that will keep the brass pretty shiny for a while. But if you put a lacquer over it, it's going to give you more of a moisture barrier and preserve it a little bit longer. take a little video because like my view from sitting behind this thing to play it is getting so much better of course the the fall boards not on like the thing people know is like the key cover um, it's still off but like this trim piece is back on oh, I need to wipe it down a little bit it's so shiny I'm not used to seeing the keys now I was able to shine up the bass strings those are not new strings and the tone is already so much better on it. They resonate longer. Oh, and I, f 
fix my A key that wasn't working. My very low A. It's looking better and better. Nice and shiny. I'm not used to seeing all this. Polish the brass for the lock. The, the like hinge that holds the post. I've got some glue drying. There's like a little felt thing inside there right now. So I've got that. The smaller prop rod is up. But yeah, I like that hinge, and I've got green tape against it, so it looks kind of, it looks funny. But anyway, I polished that thing up, and it looks amazing. I'm really happy about this. So yeah, it's cleaner inside now. I'm not done cleaning, but the strings are shinier. I realized I can get all those things to look nice. So yeah, the view from back here is just getting better and better. Cool. There we go. Love that lash. That's so shiny. It just looks so good from back here. All right, cool. shiny it's not perfect but it's for just doing it myself and being kind of new to this wood finishing thing I'm super happy about this it looks great and then the underneath is shiny as well I did that earlier and then I put it on rags like so basically when the piano is open you'll be able to see yourself in it 
already is in there playing a little bit. <laughs> Alright, cool. There it is. I gotta say, one of my favorite parts to the restoration of this piano was doing the pedal lyre section that goes underneath and kind of holds all your pedals together. I disassembled it down as much as I could. I got the pedals taken out. I polished those up really nice. I redid the red felts throughout so that it just, everything about it looked brand new and uh, I couldn't be happier with the way that it came out. Just the detail in the woodwork the way the clear coat shined up. Um, I was just totally happy with this part and I thought it looked absolutely amazing once it was finished. So one thing you will notice about pianos is they're not super complicating when it comes to the makeup of it. I mean, a lot of the things that you're going to have to deal with is the wood, the brass, and the felt. I don't do a lot of work to the keys on the pianos if they're nice because the keys I just want to clean them up and, you know, make sure they're they're kind of smooth and not caked up with junk. But the felts are kind of a big part of it because you want things to operate kind of smoothly and also not get damaged and the felt keeps things from getting damaged a lot of times. There's a, a felt that kind of lays right up against the keys but it's actually attached to the fall board. So I redid that whole felt in red. I also did all the felts in the, the pedal lyre so you've got places where when you let go of the pedal, as soon as you release the foot pedal it's going to go up and it's going to rest maybe kind of against the felt or it's going to rub on the sides of the felt instead of going like against the wood. So that's something to pay attention to as you're taking the piano apart. Make sure anywhere that you're kind of cutting the old felts off that uh, for one thing you're not damaging the wood where it goes but make good note of how those felts are glued on and you know the sizing that they are and things like that. Now I always say if I can see myself in the finish, we're obviously doing something right. And pretty much every part of this piano I could just about use it as a mirror if it was dark enough. I mean of course black is probably the color you could see yourself in the most, but being that it's a dark wood stain, there are certain places that I can put myself right up to it and I feel like I could just take a selfie. I couldn't resist. I walk in to my bottom story and it just, it's so amazing. It's the best looking thing in here by far. So here's a quick like kind of preview of it. Um, I walk in and I see all this shininess and I know it didn't look like that before. It's just, uh, it's, it's amazing. I'm loving it, loving the way this thing's coming out. So shiny. So yeah, anyway, and as you can see here, the bottom of the lid is also shined up really nice. 
I put my new brass prop cups on there. You can see yourself in it. There's the prop stick shined up the hinge. Anyway, I'll do like a I'll do like a full, you know, rundown of everything that I fixed and restored on it when, when it's finished. But yeah. The jack stands are still there because I'm working on the third leg now. But yeah, the pedal unit. Maybe I should flip the camera around. The other camera's better. Cool. Anyway, there you go. It's a short teaser. Amazing what you can do with a buffer. Now, this lid hinge was dark brown about 30 minutes ago. That came out nice. It's my belief that this piano started its life black. Um, when I took it apart I was able to see some areas where the black paint was still left over and it looked like when I got the piano somebody had done a pretty good job of sanding it down and keeping it nice and smooth. It didn't have any really bad scratches. You know whoever did it seemed to know what they were doing. It's just that that bare wood needed a good finish. It needed some protection over it, and that's really why I wanted to do it. Besides, I wanted the look of a nice shiny uh, wood stain color. Now, speaking of the black paint that the piano started with, you could say it was a bit of an accident, but I love that. Something about that black paint that's left over in the grain of the wood, it really makes the grain stick out. And if you look at certain parts of the piano, it looks like it almost has this beautiful tiger striped kind of finish in the wood and I couldn't be happier with the way that that worked out and honestly I consider certain things that I do in the future I'm probably gonna rub some black paint into the grain and then do a fine sanding so that you can see that black embedded in there before doing the stain. It's actually given me some really good ideas and uh, I'm gonna use that technique in the future on purpose whereas on this piano it kind of happened on accident and I just love the way that it came out. Last part's about to get some clear sealer.
So as I've already kind of mentioned, um, I'm very happy with the way the finish is coming out. I've had people stop by and check out the piano and you know I've had them use words like it's stunning and absolutely beautiful and breathtaking. So that's that's a good thing. You know they say wow it's just breathtaking to kind of be around it because you've got all this polished brass and this clear coat's nice and shiny. You know they run their fingers against the the side of it and it's it's all super slick. So um, I think overall it was a pretty successful restoration and I'm glad that I was able to get a hold of this beautiful Yamaha piano and I hope that I keep it for years to come. I highly doubt that I'm gonna find one that I like better than this one and actually be able to afford to purchase it. So I think I'm gonna have this one around for quite a while. So as this thing is coming together, it's just looking amazing and I was just blown away by, you know, the the feeling that I got with how beautiful it was and uh, you know, all the little new pieces that I put on there. I replaced a couple brass pieces like the ones that go underneath the lid where the prop rod goes because the old pieces were actually made of wood and they were kind of chipped and I said, you know, I've seen that they're brass on new pianos so I want to order those. I was able to get those on eBay at a very fair price. Also, I like to go throughout the moving parts of the piano, like where the fallboard opens. I don't want it to just set wood against wood, so I use some nice little clear rubber bumpers, and you can purchase those very cheap at a local home improvement warehouse. Also, anywhere that the lid is going to close onto the case, I went on eBay as well, and I was able to find the little rubber stoppers that go in the holes and then they provide that cushion as you close that big heavy lid of the piano and then as you flip over the back section of the lid I used um, kind of a, a wider diameter I'd say it was almost an inch in diameter just a nice little clear rubber bump stop and uh, just get some assorted bump stops and you'll find places to put them you know anywhere that there's going to be a bit of a contact between, you know, like the fallboard or the lids or whatever, those kind of moving parts. I always appreciate the support out there and the love that you guys show and leave some uh, questions in the comments if you got it. And uh, we'll see you back here sometime soon. Thank you.